Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure coming to you from Waikiki Beach. Uh, my wife and I just got back from about a two-month sabbatical. We were sailing in the Virgin Islands and uh, we had just gotten our, our Long Ride Home TV show done the last season, the one filmed in, in, uh, in Hawaii. It's airing on EWTN now and I just finished my, my newest book. Uh, 12 Rules for Manliness, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone? <laughs> and then we went out on a speaking tour. So when we got to the boat, we just pretty much collapsed, uh, and God restored us. But uh, we're so glad to be home in Hawaii again. We have a great guest with us today. His name is Father Habiger. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Zoop up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. My wife always tells me to start off the, our radio show uh, with the Hawaiian uh, sign of the cross, Ake Makua. Kekeki Ame Keohana Hemalele in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Um, this is a delayed broadcast, but for me, this is Valentine's Day and it's Ash Wednesday. I just sent a, a message out to the men in the in my man cave. You know, we have a Zoom uh, meet up about once a month. We have a non Facebook community called the Man Cave and Bear School of Manliness. It's a three year curriculum on manliness. But I sent them uh, out a, a message today. It was a picture of a huge 350, maybe 400 pound defensive tackle running with the football and uh, all these little kids, like probably like junior high age kids or high school kids trying to tackle them. That's what Valentine's Day can be like, I think for men sometimes. It's just kind of like this, oh no, what are we gonna do? So I send out a message to all of them to let them know to, to get ready and give each other ideas what to do for Valentine's Day. But it's also kind of interesting because this year it's Ash Wednesday. And uh, my wife, Cindy's in Florida. She just, uh, she just uh, showed me a picture of her. She already got her ashes. I'm recording this really early in the morning. But uh, yeah, it's so good to be home again. I wanted to read something to you. Though. Some, we, in, in Bear School of Manliness, we have the curriculum. And this is just an excerpt uh, from, my, uh, from my newest book, 12 Rules for Manliness. Where have all the cowboys gone? It's been in the top 10 in uh, Christian men's books off and on for the last five months. So it's it's great. This is a quote from John Wayne. You're born a boy, but you got to become a man. This is an excerpt from my book. I wanted to live up to the cowboy code that I saw in the men of, uh, that raised uh, my generation, those men before us. It seemed like the men around me all sought to be virtuous, and they held each other, <clears throat> they held each other to, that, to that challenge <clears throat> to be virtuous. And it just seems like that time has kind of come and gone. There's a quote someone gave me once that's, that says this. I've heard, <clears throat> maybe you have too. Soft men make for soft times. Soft times make for hard men. Hard men make for hard times. Hard times make for soft men. I think we're in that time now where those hard men made for soft times and now the soft the soft, uh, the soft men, the soft times are making for soft men. And actually, we're probably at the point where the soft men are making for hard times. And so the challenge is we got to do something about that. We can't, we can't pretend like we're victims. It's our fault. It's a, we're, we, we, we were past the torch, and we need to live up to the challenge. But it's so cool how smart I am because um, you're going to think I'm really smart because I found a quote from St. Augustine. Actually, I just stumbled across it, but you'd think I was really brilliant to find this because it's so cool. It's almost like the Holy Spirit gave it to me about a couple weeks after I wrote that chapter. And it's basically a paraphrase of Augustine. He, he said, um, <clears throat> hard times, bad times, uh, that is what people say. But let us live well, and, uh, and, uh, and we will make the times, and the times will be good. That's a bit of a paraphrase, but he's, saying, he's basically saying, Everybody's saying it's hard times and bad times, but it's, but it's up to us to make the times what they are. And you don't have to make change the whole world. Just in your own environment, in your own, in your own uh, area of your family and living out the stewardship of your own kuleana, your own area of, <clears throat> of responsibility, you can make these hard times into good times 
uh, for the people that God has called you to serve. And we have with us t- today uh, our guest, uh, Father Matthew Habager. You say his name, Ha, which means ha ha, and bigger means a bigger laugh. Father Matthew, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. It's a pleasure to be here. <clears throat> Fa- Father, remember uh, in, when God changed Abraham's name to Abraham and he changed Sarah's name to Sarai? They say that he added a ha ha to each of their, to their names because they laughed when they thought that God would give them a child. But Father Matthew Habiger, he's a, he's a Benedictine uh, monk and he's currently at St. Benedict's Abbey. Uh, he's had a great impact on people in the realm of humana vitae, of natural family planning. We're going to dig a little bit deeper into that, but now he's really engaged uh, in prison ministry. And so, Father Matthew Habiger, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. It's wonderful to be with you and your your, your radio audience there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have the we have the greatest people. We have we have wonderful people uh, that follow the show. And the thing that the reason why our our radio show is the best show that's ever been. Is because of our guests. <laughs> That's what I say. <laughs> but uh, we want to get to know you first. Tell us a little bit about your story and how you became. You know, I, and like I said, I'm a Benedictine oblate. I'm kind of an orphan right now because my monastery here is closing here in Hawaii. But um, but I love the Benedictine way, and I've had that relationship with the Benedictine since a long time ago. So tell Where us your you story. Like me to start? <laughs> I want to know what got you traction in your spiritual journey and how that transitioned into your. Like becoming a priest, and then, yeah, hit. Well, it's rather interesting. Um, you know, your family influences you very much. And uh, I'm the youngest of three. <clears throat> and uh, uh, I was always impressed with my parents. Um, their idea of quality time would be to walk to a daily mass every day. Wow. And, you know, that kind of rubs off on you. And... Um, Somehow or other, I had great admiration for the priests that I knew. You know, there's all sorts of things that a young person in grade school c- could be thinking about. But um, uh, I was drawn to that and admired very much uh, the priests that I knew. And it so happened that there was a, a high school seminary, a minor seminary, at Victoria, Kansas, run by the, the Capuchins. And it was just, well, 30 miles away from Russell, Kansas, where I was at the time. And so uh, I started out rather early. I must have been, what, 13 at the time, you know, but a, a great influence by a, a different uh, friars, uh, brothers, uh, um, uh, so many things. I, I, I just kind of absorbed all those stuff like a sponge. So one thing leads to another. And um, when it's time for me to get into college, I go to, um, at that time, St. Benedict's. College in Atchison, Kansas, now was known as Benedictine College, rather well known. <laughs> but uh, <clears throat> there, I'm under the influence of the Benedictines. It so happens my father was a graduate of the college back in 1927, you know, so kind of family ties and family influence. But uh, again, exposed to a tremendous amount of, of different uh, talents, different men, what they were doing, and uh, uh, their apostolates, their dedication to it, all of that. It's very, very uh, uh, attractive to me. When I was 20, <clears throat> so that's after my junior year of college, I uh, entered the monastery as a novice. And it was rather interesting. There were 21 of us in that class. Wow. You met, met yeah. There. Wow. Uh, now, Eleven of them from were from New Jersey, St. Mary's, New Jersey. And in my, in my group, there was about eight of us you know, from, from Kansas and two from Pennsylvania. But uh, you could imagine, you know, this is this would be what <clears throat> 1962, at right at the beginning of Vatican II. Oh, you know, so this is still the, the you know the the uh, heyday, the Hal- Halcyon days, was large numbers of uh, uh, religious and, and seminarians and, and others. So it's quite an experience. Uh, <clears throat> um, I get it introduced to monastic life, you know, with, with a large group and, and uh, so many things going on. So, you know, in a way, my uh, formation is rather, uh, rather typical, but at the same time, not, not what you call all that exciting. It, it was very predictable, you know, four years of college, <clears throat> four years of theology, you know. Then I'm ordained, 1968. <clears throat> it's rather unusual, I should tell you. Um, I have an unusual family. Um, my brother joined the monastery two years before I did. And when my mother died, 
my father joined the monastery. Oh, my goodness. And, wow. And I, I might mention also that uh, my mother and father had made a agreement among themselves that when, if one died, the other one would devote the rest of their life to the service of the church. Oh so my, my father God. joins the monastery. <clears throat> if you could imagine that. You know, was, that a, was that while you were there? <laughs> yeah. So the three of us oh, are here together. Oh, my. That's and, amazing. I've never heard anything like this. It's amazing. So a father and two sons. Now, it, it, goes, it, it gets even more interesting. In 1968, we're ready for ordination. So the three of us are ordained together. Oh, my. My, my father, my brother, and myself. So, uh, <clears throat> so you can see that uh, I look at the, at the good Lord and, and the mysterious ways in which he works, and I sort of accept uh, whatever, <clears throat> whatever seems to be his will, whatever's being handed down to me. I, I have great confidence. That's a, that's a critical statement. We're going to have to take a break, Father, but uh, w where can people find you if they want to? If they, I know that you have some YouTube videos, but where can people uh, get in contact with you or find you? If they try to reach me, mm -hmm. uh, the best way is through emails. <clears throat> mm. And... Um, uh, you want my email number? If you'd like yeah. to, sure. Sure. It's M, and then Habiger, H A B I G E R, at Kansas Monks with an S, dot org. It's so cool. Habiger at Kansas Monks dot org. It's so cool, you guys. Isn't it that we have monks? We we we're Catholics are cool, man. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure and our guest father, Matthew Habiger. Schoolofmanliness.com is a place for men of grit and grace to join together, to inspire, to encourage, and to challenge each other to grow in manly virtue. Members receive morning man meditations, a monthly curriculum that is rich with audio, video, and written content, and a trail guide to help you map out your new trajectory. Many of our members lead their sons through this same curriculum. Your membership gives you access to both the Man Cave, which is our non-Facebook type community, and the School of Manliness at schoolofmanliness.com. Become a member at schoolofmanliness.com. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link, or go to NotreDameFCU.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. You can gain traction in the virtues in my book, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue. And you can be inspired by my personal testimony of heartache and triumph with my book, A Surfing Guide to the Soul, both newly published by Sophia and available at our web store, deepadventure.com and also on amazon.com. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I want to invite everybody to go to our website, uh, Bears School of Manliness. It's uh, it's it's really amazing what we're doing there. We've got men that have joined our man cave. That is a non-Facebook community. We have Zoom meetups about once or twice a month, and then we have a three-year curriculum, Bears School of Manliness. It uses videos, long-form videos, 60-second videos, written content. Audio from homilies from some of our some of our friends and uh, and uh, and then uh, self assessments. It's something that you as a man will go through with uh, with the other men that are in the man cave. Uh, but also, it's a place where you can take your sons and lead them through. They can't become part of the man cave, but you can lead your sons. They'll have their own login, and you can track how they're doing. And once a week, you can take your sons through this process. It's a great thing to start them off uh, anytime after they're about confirmation age. 
and and go go through the process, three year process of talking story with them about what it is to be a man. So that's deepadventure.com, or you can also find it at bearsschoolofmanliness.com. We'd love to have you come join, and you can subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. Get a lot of cool stuff sent to you, including uh, our radio shows, the YouTube version that you can then share and help evangelize other other men. <laughs> well, our, our guest today is Father uh, Matthew Habinger. Habinger. Um, we were gonna. Ha- we almost canceled the show with him because uh, we heard a vicious rumor that he was a Kansas City Chief fan, and I'm an Oakland Raider fan. So I know this is several weeks after uh, the Super Bowl, but what a, you know, what an inspiring game, Father. What were you watching it? Oh, the whole monastery was. <laughs> <laughs> and you could imagine, you know, this is what uh, the Chiefs went <clears throat> to the uh, uh, Super Bowl four times consecutively yeah. Yeah. and won at three. It's, it's just amazing. Who would expect that out of Kansas City? And I think they always came from behind to win, didn't they? Yeah, you know, it's, it's amazing. So you could imagine the great celebration that's going on right now down <clears throat> at the Union Station in, in Kansas City. I don't want to hear about it. That's terrible. <laughs> Kansas City Chiefs. No, my wife and I were all actually pulling full. Them, full. That, is that going on right now as we speak? I believe it is. You know, wow. The parade, you know, and then all sorts of uh, speeches and celebrations. You could imagine all the uh, uh, students in grade school, high school, college yeah. students, and others that are out there for them. Well, we take it's, delight. It's we take delight in Mahomes. We we followed some. Uh, I forget what special it was on him, and he seems to be delightful, but super hard working. But I got to tell you, back in the day when Johnny Madden was the coach of the Raiders and Hank Stram, you know, was the coach of the Chiefs, there could have been more two opposites. You know. Johnny Madden couldn't keep his shirt tucked in if he tried, and Hank Stram's wearing a vest and looking all dapper. And, and so I think, was it Lenny, was it Dawson? I think way back in the day, you know, Daryl LaMonica. I mean, I, I was following them when I was a little kid, so well, I just couldn't hate. I hate the Chiefs almost as much as I hate the Steelers. However, we we fell in love with watching the Chiefs uh, lately, so we were, we were cheering for them. I was on a flight from Tampa. I landed at Three o'clock, I was watching the game on my iPhone and jammed over to my house. My son met me over and we watched the last half. So it was great. <laughs> but let's let's talk about let's go. Let's talk some more stories. This is an amazing story about how you and your father and your brother were all ordained priests on the at the same time. And, and, and that, that's just amazing. It just it, it's it sounds like something that means someone in there has got to become a saint. I don't know. Maybe it's your mom that, that passed away. <laughs> That's a good place to start, yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, then, 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 you know, I'm a Benedictine oblate, and I, I, I was uh, first encountered, you know, when I, when I was a young man, uh, I went out to the Pecos Benedictine Monastery. It was a Catholic charismatic monastery in New Mexico and had real deep um, conversion experiences there. And, uh, and then members of that monastery came out to Hawaii and founded the monastery here. So I was part of the, the Benedictine Monastery, Mary Spouse of the Holy Spirit Monastery here. But it, it looks like that's, that's, those days are done now. That season is over. So I feel like a little bit of an orphan. But I love the Benedictine life, the rules of St. Benedict. I love the, um, the commitment to ora e labora. You know, there's, where I have my sailboat in the Virgin Islands, you know, I live in Hawaii, but our sailboat's in the Virgin Islands. There's a little building about three stories high and up above it has the quote the benedictine quote and i wonder what's the story behind that building is it is it a monastery i don't know what what do those words mean to you that 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 kind of creed of the of of the benedictines of of praise prayer and work well you know that's a great benedictine motto and it makes great sense you know, if, if you want to have structure and meaning and purpose for your life, that's a good place to start. You know, we talk about uh, the rhythms of a day, you know, yes. the aura and the labora. The aura and the labora. You know, they both go together, but they're so satisfying. And uh, if you stay with a, a major project like monks do, you know, monks uh, are very much uh, uh, attached to one monastery. That's that's their home for life. Um, at least that's their headquarters. <clears throat> but uh, you could imagine how they develop things. And you can't read your European history without reading monastic history. Yeah, absolutely. You know? Yeah. So there's there's literally thousands of monasteries, you know, over over the past fifteen years. So, um, <clears throat> and monks trans yeah, yeah. Tr- monks transformed the kind of forest and and swampland I think of France into into great um, great uh, farmland 
and vineyards and and uh, hard working, did things that no one no one else would have done, you know. And See, plus, the amazing the, thing is, without attempting to do this, um, the, the Benedictines, following that wonderful way of life laid out by Saint Benedict, you know, in the rule, that um, it becomes a a, a, a pattern. And the monks, without a trying to do so, started transforming culture all throughout Europe. Yes. And uh, um, it was just very natural. You know, if you're going to be dedicated to something, say it's agronomy, you know, uh, uh, whatever, whatever type of work you're in, you know, eventually you develop different skills to go with that. Mm. And then people start gathering around you, and one thing leads to another. Mm. So the Benedictines, if you read their history, you realize they've been into everything under the sun. Yeah. You know, what, what, whatever the church needed, whatever whatever mm. the needs were, they, they would address themselves to it. And so um, uh, it's, it's quite remarkable. Here we are 15 centuries later, you know, and, and uh, it has the same meaning today. And the oblate program that you're part of is a, is a very real part of this. You know, uh, extending the spirituality of the of the monastery and of the monks to the laity, and as you know, the laity are the vast majority of the church. So you you got to try to do everything you can to to reach out to them and provide what what spiritual power you have and make it available to them. <clears throat> and you know, you know, the thing is, it's perfect. The Benedictine oblate for me, because of the, that that motto or that creed of work and prayer and work how it's the rhythm it fills your day i work you know but i but um being a benedictine i always kind of get my 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 first instinct is to get up and get to my desk and get to work but i realize as a benedictine my first work is the liturgy that's the work of the people is to spend time in prayer with the lord and meditating on his word because that's my that's my that's that's work too it's service to the lord it's worshiping god uh, but that, that's why the Benedictine uh, approach to life kind of really suits suits me. But what's something really unusual that you're, I want to just kind of touch on the subject, we'll take a break, then I want to go deeper, is um, you say that there are many Benedictine oblates in a prison uh, where, you go, where you have prison ministry now. Well, <clears throat> um, it's rather interesting how those Benedictine oblates in prison got started. Uh, there's a monastery in Canyon City, Colorado, it's, it's near the uh, um, uh, the Grand Canyons, but within a nine mile, a ten mile radius of that monastery, there were nine prisons. Wow! So medical monks were involved with prison ministry, and then uh, because um, the, the monastery had had not attracted new members for twenty years, the monastery closed, and many of the men transferred to Saint Benedict's Abbey, where I am. And one of the one of the monks there had tailor designed the oblate program for the needs of inmates. Tailor designed it for them, hmm. and the thing is a perfect fit, just a perfect fit. Father Lewis Kirby was the one doing this, and he was trying to get me involved in it. But at that time, my plate was full. I was traveling the whole country promoting natural family planning. Mm -hmm. You could only do so much. I did what I could. But uh, eventually, eventually, more time was uh, available to me, and uh, I, I kept uh, investing more and more into this program. And you know, there's a lot of talent. Wait, let, let's take a break, Father, and then we can really go into it. We can really go into it, uh, Father Matthew Habiger. How can people find you again? Your your email. So the email is m habiger m h a b i g e r at Kansas monks with an S dot org. <clears throat> we're talking with Father Matthew Habiger, and we're going to get into this whole area of of, of the the grittiness of prison ministry. I know so many men, uh, especially like in Catholic Cross Bears motorcycle ministry. I think almost all of the men and women there have some have been in prison, and now they're involved in prison ministry. Uh, we're talking with Father Matthew Habiger. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. <laughs> Announcing Spirit Adventure TV with Bear and Cindy. So many people, especially you mama bears, tell us we want more of Bear and Cindy together. Well, we're happy to announce our website, spiritofadventuretv.com, as well as our YouTube channel, Bear Wozniak Spirit of Adventure, where you can watch Spirit of Adventure TV with Bear and Cindy. 
join us where we live in the Hawaiian Islands or where we sail our boat, the Spirit of Adventure, in the Caribbean. Experience both adventure and serenity with us as we share our life together, as well as the joy and the wisdom of our faith. Go to spiritofadventuretv.com to find out more and subscribe on YouTube to Bear Wozniak's Spirit of Adventure. And join us, Spirit of Adventure, with Bear and Cindy. Here is a YouTube video short, which is based on an excerpt from my newest book, 12 Rules for Manliness, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone? Don't be a quitter. As my ninja sensei used to say as he pushed down on my shoulders, assisting me in doing push-ups, you can do one more of anything. When I paddled my surfboard across the treacherous Molokai Channel, it was just one paddle stroke at a time across those 35 miles. When I pedaled my bicycle across the United States, it was just one more pedal stroke at a time that got me across. To a cowboy, being a quitter is as bad as being a horse thief. When someone quits, they leave others holding the bag and having to do their work, or worse yet, they leave them in a dangerous position. We need to carry our own backpack. Louis L'Amour said in The Education of a Wandering Man, much was forgiven if a man had courage, integrity, and if he did his job. If a man gave less than his best though, somebody always had to pick up the slack and he was not admired. Buy 12 Rules for Manliness, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone? at schoolofmanliness.com or wherever books are sold. Mama Bears, get these books into the hands of your men. Be the kind of man that when he gets out of bed in the morning, the devil says, oh no, he's up. Go to deepadventure.com and invite Bear to speak. Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Uh, my sons uh, have been so busy working on these 60 second shorts. They're all excerpts from my newest book, 12 Rules for Manliness. Where have all the cowboys gone? We're using AI uh, to do these cowboy themed 60 second shorts. We want you to go to uh, Bear Wozniak Spirit of Adventure YouTube channel and subscribe and then we will send you out, the, we send out the shorts three times a week. That gets you actively involved in a real cool way in evangelization or evangelizing men. You can send out these 60 second shorts on your social media and uh, some of them really light up, really light things up on YouTube. So this is a way that you can become involved instead of, uh, I know you don't wanna just be passive, you wanna be actively involved. This is a tool that you can use if you go there and you subscribe. Plus you get uh, some 60 second shorts from our TV show, Long Ride Home, the motorcycle TV show, and, and you get this, this radio show, the, the Bear Wozniak Adventure radio show, um, with our guests uh, in the video format that you can also share out and watch. So go to Bear Wozniak Spirit of Adventure YouTube channel and subscribe and like and become a member. Uh, all those things. It really, it really helps. If, if you subscribe and you share one time, uh, YouTube goes, oh, people are sharing this. I think we'll, they, then, they, then their algorithm sends it out to more and more people. So become part of our evangelization. Help us out. Father Matthew Habiger, uh is a Benedictine oblate at the uh, St. Benedict Abbey in Kansas. And uh, we're, talking about, we're talking about prison, uh, working within prisons. When I was a young man, maybe in my <coughs> 20s, I went into prisons for a couple of years and led Bible studies. And, uh, you know, the thing about being in prison is that things get pretty real there. You know, they're, they're, uh, <coughs> there's, it, there's grit, and uh, our job is to bring grace. And, uh, and the, uh, <coughs> the men there who are Christians, they can become real brothers in, in among themselves. Tell us about <coughs> your experience uh, going into prisons, because a lot, a lot of people listening have family members that are there, or there may be men in prison right now, men and women listening. Well, it's estimated 1% of the American population is incarcerated. So that's at least 3 million. <clears throat> and at, at least 25% of that population is Catholic. Now, <clears throat> prisons are a very dark place. They're, they're very difficult. Um, the, the typical inmate has a, a lost connection with his family. They disown him. 
He's no longer in, uh, connected with his friends. He's in an environment, you know, completely confined, uh, limited as to what he can do, and uh, his what his acquaintances are not exactly people he would choose to be with. And you know, with with time, that could become very, very depressing. You know, the prisons are a very dark place. So uh, <clears throat> uh, we find that uh, that men are looking for purpose and 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 a structure for their life and their faith that they rediscover their faith and <clears throat> they rediscover um, maybe through a friend of somebody else who is an oblate in the prison that there's this organization called benedictine oblates for uh, 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 benedictine oblates in prison and um, uh, they realize that uh, we have something to offer <laughs> We send them uh, a copy of the rule, a manual, you know, a short history of Benedictines, a Bible, a catechism, you know, all the basics. And then we provide a monthly newsletter, eight page newsletter. By the way, <clears throat> four pages are uh, written by the, the, the oblates in prison. Can anybody months. subscribe, Father? Or is that just the prisoners can subscribe? Well, it's designed specifically for men and women serving time. Mm -hmm. But if others wanted to join, they certainly could. <clears throat> but so we send this, this, what, this monthly newsletter. And uh, it's, it's, it's just amazing. You know, mm -hmm. uh, we also send out uh, uh, the Abbey here has a, a monthly newsletter called Kansas Monks. We send that out also. Now, for many of these men, this is the only mail they get. But in addition to that, <clears throat> they carry on a lot of correspondence with us. There's over 450 Benedictine oblates in prison throughout the country in 23 states and 123 prisons. Are it's there any? Done. Wow, uh, there is all done by correspondence. <laughs> See, it's the only way we, we could do it, stay in contact with all of these people. Right. But a, a tremendous amount of of, uh, <clears throat> of correspondence. I, I get at least 20, sometimes 40 letters a week. You could imagine what goes into to this. And they're making legitimate requests. That I, I have that. someone that I need to put in touch with you guys. Yeah, I, I, yeah, he's 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 become. Just to say, I, I I was I raised I was a youth minister I, for a while. I was away from the church. I was a youth minister in a small uh, in a small church, and one of those members of my of my youth ministry is in and out of prison all the time. In the process, he he makes connection with me, and in the process, he's become Catholic. And oh man, he knows he knows the Catholic faith better than anybody. But I think becoming an oblate would be. I I've encouraged him in that area, but now I know exactly who to send him to. That's beautiful. I'm sorry I interrupted you, though. Go ahead. Now, the interesting thing is we never advertise. The whole program is spreads by word of mouth that uh, <clears throat> the, the oblates find a uh, real meaning and purpose in all of us. Others see them and say, what do you know we don't know? Mm. And so they expose them to what the oblate program is. By the way, you know, as an oblate, <clears throat> You, you say morning prayer, evening prayer, right, every day. Mm -hmm. You read some scripture every day, you know, and, and, and you're trying to, uh, what, apply the, uh, the principles of the, of the Gospels to your life. Mm. The Benedictine rule is basically applying the principle to a group of men living together mm -hmm. under one roof, mm -hmm. you know. But, but you find that this is a, a, a perfect fit for them. Well, you think about, fit. I mean, you think about, the, the, the life of a monk, the, you know, Benedict was, was the first one to really write that kind of fatherly advice to men who are committed to living, and they would live in little cells, right? I mean, it's, there's a lot in common. There, there, there's men living together in a common, in a common ways, and there's a, there was a real sense in, well, there's just so much that I can see the correlation, and if you can redeem that experience for the men and, uh, and the women. Yeah, I used to ask some of the, the oblates, can you really identify with us? especially with that Kansas Monks monthly thing that comes, you know, with all sorts of photos and stories. And they said, of course we can. You're just like us. Yeah. You're, you're a bunch of dudes living under a common roof. See? Now, how, tell me about, like, I, I have a good friend, Eric Wardrum. He founded the Catholic Cross Bears Motorcycle Ministry. And his story is not unusual. He was, uh, he was in prison. And a priest came in to hear confession, as he would from time to time 
came to one point where uh, the, pris- the, the priest came in, and, he, and, and he's about to leave, and finally Eric found it in himself to yell out, say, Father, there's one more man here. I want to make confession. Which he had the priest had been coming in for o- over and over and over again. And, uh, and the priest said, well, yes, my son. You know, I began to do the confession. What are your sins? And he said, every one of the Ten Commandments, Father. I'm in here for murder, you know. And uh, he said, well, don't worry. There's, he, t- he mentioned David and Moses, uh, others, saints, that um, had done the same thing and that, that God was there for him and could forgive him. But it seems like for so many men, uh, they're in a prison of some sort of uh, themselves right now. Maybe it's the prison of pornography. Maybe it's the prison of, of anger or, or, or who knows what. But they feel all locked up inside. And, but so many men, the real key for men is to go to confession. Do you see that sort of grace in, in, uh, in prison? Do you see, what do you see as far as that moment of initial conversion when the men really turn their hearts to the Lord, the power of confession? You'd be amazed uh, <clears throat> there at how much evangelization goes on uh, by the oblates in their own uh, prison yards. Mm. That if they find their faith and, and it's being strengthened, you know, and, and all the consolation that goes with it, mm. you know, learning a, a strong prayer life, uh, developing a, a, a deeper relationship with God, mm. and then they, they want to share that with others, you know, and, uh, you know, we send them all sorts of tools. Um, different people uh, send us used Catholic books. Mm. Uh, recently, uh, recently, a parish in Kansas City gave me 18 boxes full of recent uh, used Catholic books. So we send these out to, to any obli interested in these, you know, and they, they use them for their own purposes, you know, spread them around, share them with others. They can answer questions. They, they, can, they can lead people back into the scriptures. It, they can lead them back yes. into the Catholicism and a, a study of the Catechism, RCIA. Yes. It's, it's just amazing, the evangelization that goes on within a prison. <clears throat> and you know, the thing is, is we, we as humans, we're made, I mean, like, if you look at the Ten Commandments, they're kind of like about relationships with, relationships for the most part with other people. And when you're in prison, what a great, what, what a, a challenge, but what a place to work out your, work out your uh, developing in virtue. I should send you some boxes of books. I don't know if you'd be open to it, but you know, to I'm just, happy to, to tell you also that. Oh, we got to take we got to take a we got to take a break. I okay. warned you about this. We'll be right back and we'll talk story about that. This is the Bear Wozniak adventure. We're talking with Father Matthew Habiger. He is a, a, a monk with Saint Benedict's Abbey. You can find more out about those monks at Kansas Monks. Is it .org or .com or what is it? .org at KansasMonks.org. What a cool name for a website. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. People love our EWTN TV show, Long Ride Home with Bear Wozniak. Thanks to you, the show has won four different tally awards. And now, instead of waiting each week for the next episode to air, you can actually binge watch our show and even share it with your friends when you go to deepadventure.com and join the Mama Bears or the Man Cave. Along with all the other benefits, you get total access to all the seasons of our aired episodes, plus instant access to episodes that won't even air for several months. Long Ride Home with Bear Wozniak, a great way to communicate the gospel in a gritty enough way that even tough men will stop and watch at deepadventure.com. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link, or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. Here is a YouTube video short which is based on an excerpt from my newest book, 12 Rules for Manliness, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone? Abandon yourself to God's will. Here's my personal creed. The most radical quest 
you can pursue in life is to abandon yourself to the wild adventure of God's will. Because when you're in God's will, that's where the adventure really is because you get to see God do stuff. Holy Spirit action plan. My newest book, 12 Rules for Manliness, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone, has hit the top five in Christian books for a good reason. It's because men are searching for traction and a trail guide to live out the unique calling and the gifts that they were born with, that each man individually is factory loaded with by God. Paul said, be watchful, stand firm in the faith, act like men, do all things in love. Finally, here is a book that talks with men the way men talk with each other. Just plain old straight shoot. By the way, Mama Bears, this is your chance to get this message to your men. Go to schoolofmanliness.com or anywhere books are sold. 12 Rules for Manliness. Where have all the cowboys gone? you still listening? I thought we warned you to change to an easy listening station. Well, you asked for it. Here is more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Aloha. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We want to invite you to go to our uh, website, deepadventure.com, and subscribe to our newsletter. When you do that, you get the YouTube version of our radio show. Uh, sent to you so it's video and you can share that with others we have uh, excerpts from my book there we have the 60 second shorts that you can share and uh, it's just a great place for you to go it's a great place for you to go um, to evangelize and we invite the women we have over ha about half our following us are women so we invite you two to come and, and, and participate and and get our newsletter we're with us today father Matthew Habiger he's a, a Benedictine priest at the at St. Benedict's Abbey and we're talking about this impact they're, that they're having uh, uh, among prisons. And so you, you, I had to interrupt you, Father. Go ahead, what you were about to say. Well, there's so many things you, you can talk about. We have a, a lot of pen pals, mm. at least 70 or 80 pen pals, you know, laymen. Some of them are outlets, but they're, they're in regular contact with an inmate. Are they, are they doing that through email or or or, or it's snail all, mail? It's all by by writing. All, all sna by writing. Snail mail. So, snail mail. Yeah. Okay. Snail mail. Okay. Um, That's a great uh, ministry for people. I have a well, friend here that that has a right next door to me who has a problem. He fell out of the sky when he was hang gliding. He does his ministry. He does it through the computer. But he he spends. It's a great ministry for people to have. Uh, is writing letters to inmates. Uh, I would, you know, there's a lot of cautions to go along with that. But what a great thing that would be if they would reach reach now, out to you. They really treasure that kind of a contact with somebody outside the wire. Yeah. They get s such little contacts with the with the, the regular world. Now, but do they do, do they ever ask you to do things? For, I mean, I know I was told they may ask you to do things for them on the outside, and that I wasn't to do that when I was involved in in prison. I mean, that you have to. There's kind of like boundaries you have to set. Well. They ask for legitimate things, yeah. You know, especially good books, or scapulars, you know, or yeah. rosaries, you know, yeah. or you've heard of um, the uh, wonderful um, Christian prayer, you know, which has a, a four-week cycle of lauds and vespers. We have a benefactor that that provides those for anyone who interested in that, you know. But there's just all sorts of things you could do to, to what promote a strong sense of faith and spirituality in these men. This is what they're hungering for. And then they, in turn, start sharing that with others. Yes, I might Lord. mention also, we're getting back to the newsletter. Yes. Um, uh, the newsletter is written by a layman, hmm. um, associated with the Abbey here. One of them was in prison himself for 20 years. So he knows the prison culture from the inside, mm -hmm. whereas I or others would only know it from the outside. Mm -hmm. But you could imagine the wonderful stuff that goes into those monthly newsletters, you know, and we, we get uh, uh, letters from, from the oblates always telling us, thank God for what you're doing. It means so much to us. It mm -hmm. gives us a ray of hope, you know, mm -hmm. and, and a, a certain sense of guidance. This is exactly what these men need. <clears throat> Are they able to receive most of them? Like, and I know near where you are, the Eucharist. Mm -hmm. Are they able to receive that once a week or once a month or go to attend Mass? 
Mm-hmm. So um, uh, it, it's a wonderful thing to see uh, um, when these men are ready to be paroled. That is a matter of fighting the halfway house. Yes. And yeah. trying to get them well, reestablished back into regular society again. You could imagine if you've been confined 10, 15, 20, 30 years, how difficult that would be. And, and getting them back what, into uh, a regular relationship with their family. There, there's so much to be done. So much to be done. You know, <clears throat> when the Lord says, um, I was in prison and you visited me. Mm-hmm. There's much more involved in that than simply going in and saying hello. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. There's much, much more involved in that. And so, so many men that are are incarcerated, <clears throat> I forget what the percentage is, but I think it's over half of them didn't have a father involved in their life, right? The statistic I think is even greater than that. That we need, we need our, we need to uh, be uncles. Uh, we need, to be, we need to be alert around us, men. Uh, who are you know we have our children, but we may also here in Hawaii we have the tradition of of men um, and women. When I walk down the beach, Cindy says I, we can't walk along the beach because everybody says, "Hey, Uncle Bear, I love you, Uncle Bear," or "I love you, Auntie Cindy." There's Uncle Bear. There's uncles all around her. We and we take our role seriously here in Hawaii to be uncles. And there's so many young men could, that just could just use an affirmation, Father. When I walk down along the beach. And I see a young man with a family. I always, I'm so proud of you. What a lovely family. I affirm them. Because so many men have never had anybody say to them, I'm proud of you. And so if you're a man out there, if you want to, we can help the, the men in the prison, men and women in the prison. But why not be an uncle now and affirm young men now and give them, give them, the, uh, give them a little bit of time. If there's a way that you, you know you have a friend or you know someone whose son is not being, doesn't have a father in his life. Find a find a good way to um, invite them along on a family trip with you or something. You know, we need to work only and only. Also, yeah, you know, so there. It's terribly important to stress the whole notion of fatherhood. That um, many of the men in prison are there because they never had a real father figure in their lives. Mm. They didn't have the guidance or the discipline they needed, and they're paying for it now in the prisons. So um, um, we have to do what we can to strengthen things like marriage and family, you know, and, and family life and, and fatherhood, real fatherhood. And, mm. You know, it's terribly important. These are basic things that we, we, we can't take for granted. We are constantly trying to promote these. And you go, it goes full circle, Father, because your work with uh, Humana Vitae. And you work with natural family planning. Right now, there's a great concern that the whole economy of the world is going to implode because we're not, we're not uh, America and other countries like China. We're not, we're not producing enough children to uh, even sustain our population. Well, guess who's going to win? I remember I was uh, at a Napa Institute meeting and uh, Archbishop Chaput was speaking and someone asked him, so what's the number one evangelization program out there? What's a really good program that we can bring into our parishes? And he said, oh, that's simple. Get married, have lots of children. And raise them up in the Lord. But it goes back to that humana vitae. When the pill came out and men could have sex with women without any responsibility, right? John Paul II's first writings were uh, love and responsibility. In Hawaii, we have the word kuleana. We started off the show today saying you're born a boy, but you got to become a man. And you do that by taking on responsibility. That the, the, the essential teaching of the Catholic, that, that humanity vitae would come out when it did. When John Paul II's writings on theology of the body came out when they did. Um, the right thing at the right time. We have the understanding of what it means. Uh, I, I love the fact that John Paul II went right back into Genesis 1 and said in the beginning God made them basically men and women. But, but men were made out of mud. You know, Women were more highly distilled. They came from the man's heart area. But a man, a, a, men are different. Men, men, are, men are, to be a man, so many people challenge men. You gotta man up, you gotta make money, you gotta have sex with a lot of women, you gotta be successful. Uh, yeah, that's maybe the grit part. You got to be tough. But if you don't have a, wa- a relationship with Jesus, you won't have the grace. So we need we understand that when God made Adam out of mud, He just didn't leave him there. He breathed into him a living soul, so he could be a magio dei and live in relationship with God. So men, we don't want you to be tough and macho. We want you to be have grit and grace. Live live out a life. Uh, of service, and but but it takes courage. You know what, Father? What I think that this, the key scripture verse is today for the younger generation is the verse in the Bible where the angel says to Joseph, "Do not be afraid to take Mary to you as your wife." 
There are so many women out there today are so confused and so messed up, but you got to search out and winnow and find that woman and then don't be afraid to marry her and have children and, and save the world by having <laughs> raising them up in the Lord. You've got a, one more minute to share a, a final thought, Father. What would it be? You know, one more thing. Um, by the way, I was uh, ordained one month before Humanae Vitae came out, and that encyclical has been chasing me all through my life. It's a beautiful, powerful well, work, yes. So, uh, um, you know, um, <clears throat> abortion mm. will never get to the, uh, 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 to the root of abortion until we realize that abortion is simply foolproof backup for failed contraception. Right. Humanae Vitae was uh, addressing the whole issue of contraception. And if you look at the, the results of contraception, you see why we are where we are today. So it means that we have to rediscover God's wonderful plan for marriage, for conjugal love, and for family. And then to live it, mm. the, which is very, what, uh, countercultural. Yes. Uh, Think of the price we're paying for ignoring yeah. all of us. <laughs> yeah, all the, the contraception actually led to more babies being conceived, not less. The statistics show. So, so Father, we love you so much. We love your ministry. Uh, we love your mom who's in heaven. Is your dad uh, in heaven now, too? Is he still with us? Is your dad still with us? No, he died. <laughs> so those two saints had to put up with you. Uh, but uh, so Father Matthew Habiger, his his father, his brother, and himself all were ordained as Catholic priests on the same day. If you want to find him, you can find you can go to Kansas Monks. And uh, Father, how can they find you personally? Uh, what's your email again? This way is through emails again. M Habiger, M H A B I G E R at Kansas Monks with an S dot org. Isn't it cool? I'm, to, I, I'm good with my emails. Isn't it cool to be a monk? So, <laughs> so cool. Just so cool. Well, you guys, it's a time we're drawing to a close. We got to go and t until next uh, week. May the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Aloha. Thanks for listening to the Bear Wilding Adventure. Find more manly conversation at the Bear Wilding Deep Adventure YouTube channel. Subscribe and ring the bell.